Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our Christmas Eve service tonight. Our hope for tonight is that we can pause long enough to remember and dwell on our story. The story that's been passed down to us about what happened this night. The birth of Christ. God in flesh coming and living with us. It's the beginning of the good news. The opening of the book of salvation as God brings together all the promises and hopes of his people to bear in this child. It's a weighty, heavy thing. It's a story that's been told thousands, maybe millions of times through the centuries. It's a story that has been thought about and talked about, written about by some of the wisest, smartest people to have ever lived. And yet there is no plumbing the depths of the story that we remember tonight. And so tonight, this is an invitation to you and your family as you join us to ponder these things, to ponder this story, to hear again the wonder, the beauty, the hope that we remember and celebrate tonight. May God bless us in that endeavor. And I hope you enjoy the service tonight. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken over the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged in the house and line of David. 
he was to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And they were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them. But as they were terrified, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy over all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a good sign to you and will find a baby wrapped in cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, on earth peace in those on whom his favors rest. When the angels left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has been ha- has happened. With which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been what had been told to them and about this child. And all who heard was amazed and what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that have heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. In Luke's Gospel, we're invited to experience the birth of Jesus through the eyes of shepherds. God chooses to let these shepherds in on a secret. Of all people, They are the first to find out that the prayers of their fathers and mothers, the prayers of their grandfathers and grandmothers, the prayers of their ancestors stretching back generations, have all come true on this night. They become the latest in a long line of those who have encountered God while tending sheep. Like Moses, who meets God at the burning bush, is called to rescue God's people out of Egypt while watching over flocks. Like David, who defeats Goliath after leaving his father's sheep, and who would become king, a shepherd over God's own people. Like Amos, a simple shepherd in the fields of Tekoa who received a vision and became a prophet, speaking the very words of God to the powerful of Israel. Like Moses and David and Amos, these shepherds now find themselves caught up in the work of God in the world. They are the first witnesses of the gospel the first to see what no eye has seen, the first to hear what no ear has heard, the first minds to grasp what no minds before them could have possibly conceived. So I want to invite you now to allow these shepherds to be our guides, to join them in this story and see it through their eyes that we too might get caught up in what God is doing on this night, the night that Christ is born. And so we join the shepherds in the stillness of the fields at night. The sheep have finally settled down for the night. And for the first time all day, you are finally able 
to truly rest. And so you lean up against a tree on a small hill overlooking the flock. You can feel the weariness of the day take hold in your feet, your legs, your back, your hands. As you breathe deeply, you can see your breath in the cold air. One of the lambs has come to sit in your lap, seeking warmth on this winter night. And as you gently pat the lamb's head, you lay your own head against the trunk of the tree behind you. You look up at the stars in the clear night sky. And just as you're about to close your eyes, you hear something behind you. A rustling of grass, footsteps, and immediately your heart is beating quickly. You're on high alert. You look around at the other shepherds to see if they've heard anything too. You can see in their eyes that they have. So you jump up, prepare yourself to meet whatever might be heading your way. You squint against the darkness, hoping to catch a glimpse of whatever is moving in the shadows. And then suddenly, there's a blinding light. You instinctively shield your eyes with your hand as your eyes adjust to the brightness. Before you see the figure, you hear a voice. Do not be afraid. And as your eyes continue to adjust, the voice continues. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And before you can process this angel's message, you are surrounded by voices. The light and the sound is overwhelming, but the warmth and the light in those voices make it clear that you don't need to be afraid. The sound you hear is the sound of unrestrained celebration. It's a sound that you can only compare to what you've heard in sports arenas or victory parades. As thousands upon thousands are united in joy. And then, just as quickly as the light appeared, the voices in the light vanish. And as you look around in wide-eyed shock, you begin to search the faces of your fellow shepherds, looking for confirmation that they saw what you saw, that they heard what you heard. And with smiles on their faces, they nod back at you. Then in a frenzy of conversation, you begin to process what you just experienced together, rehearsing with one another every detail of what just happened until one of you remembers the words of that first angel who talked about a child in cloths in a manger a child who will be the Messiah and then like Moses and David and Amos who met God and then decided to leave their flocks because of what they'd heard decide to leave your flocks too because you have to see this thing that God has done and so you make your way towards the lights of Bethlehem and you find the weariness in your legs is now gone and the sheer wonder of this moment is carrying you forward and as you walk you hum the song you heard the angels sing as you enter the city, your pace quickens. You look for the house you've been told about. And as you wander the streets of Bethlehem, the foolishness of what you're doing begins to creep up on you. 
You begin to be anxious about how you might be received in the dead of night by strangers. But before long, you find yourself at their door and you decide you will regret it forever if you don't go in. And so you knock. The door opens. And there is the child. Just as the angel said, in cloths lying in a manger. As you struggle to take it all in, trying to grasp the weight of this moment, you smile up at Mary and Joseph. You see smiles on their faces too, as if they knew you were coming, as if they know what you know. That this night means more than any of you can possibly comprehend. And that somehow, by luck, the grace of God, you happen to find yourselves right in the middle of it. And with that smile still on her face, Mary gets up, picks up the baby, and she comes over to you and asks you if you would like to hold him. And as you nod, she places Jesus in your arms. Mary gently touches Jesus' head as you hold him. You look up. You see her gazing at her child as you hold him. See Mary's face in that moment. What does her face look like right now? After a few more moments, you hand Jesus back to Mary. It's now time for you to depart. You know you will never forget this night. And so as you leave that house, you carry with you one question. What will you say? How do you capture the meaning, the beauty, the significance of this night? What will you tell your friends, your children, your grandchildren, what could you possibly say that would allow you to see the same look that you saw on Mary's face, on their face? The look of one who knows beyond words what this night is. According to Luke, the shepherds left, glorifying and praising God for everything they had seen. And for us, all these years later, there is still only one response possible to the story that we've heard tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.
He did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady, and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time, he came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure, in joy he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt. To a world like ours of anguish shame, he came, and his life would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. He cannot wait till the world is sane, to raise our songs with joyful voice. For to share our grief, to touch our pain, he came with love. Rejoice, rejoice!
Ready? Hold on. One, two, three. Merry Christmas from the Brazzles! For unto us a child is born. May the gift of faith, the blessing of hope, and the peace of his love be yours this holiday season. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from the Pat Pat the King family. And I'm here too. Merry Christmas, Southside family. Stay safe. Stay well. And have a happy new year. We love you. See ya. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas, Southside. Hey, Southside family. We love and miss you guys. We're on the road this holiday season, but we are with you in spirit. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from the Pharisees. Hey, Southside, we're the Carmichaels. Here's wishing you a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Merry snowy Christmas from the Fowlers. Merry Christmas, Southside Church of Christ. Merry Christmas. From the Meharan family, Nikita, Daniel, Riley, and Chip. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We celebrating Jesus' birthday. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Thanks again for joining us tonight. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I know that this Christmas likely looks very different from past Christmases for many, if not all of us. But I hope in the midst of that, we're able to connect with the joy that this season offers. The joy of sharing gifts with family and friends, whether you can open them in the same room or not. The joy of eating good food, lots of desserts. The joy of finding time away from work for rest and play. But also the deeper joys that this season brings. The joy of knowing that there is a light in the midst of the darkness. A joy that despair and grief and worry can't touch. The joy of the wonderful news that on this night, in the town of David, a Savior is born unto us. And on that news, we find rest and peace and great joy. Rest well, my friends, and know that God, Emmanuel, is with us still.